So I'm going to place a rubber stopper on top of the flask. And now I'm going to surround the flask with ice. Let's see what happens. Notice that the water begins to boil. How can this be? How can ice make water boil? Good morning. Today our goal is to investigate this demonstration and to try to understand how ice, ice that is, has caused this water to boil. So let's commence operations. The first clue. Water does not only boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Here we have a graph that examines the relationship between the boiling point for water and the surrounding atmospheric pressure. On the y-axis we have atmospheric pressure and on the x-axis boiling point. Now, when we are at sea level and we have standard pressure, we're going to note that atmospheric pressure as being 1 atm. Notice that the temperature at which water boils at is 100 degrees Celsius. This is what we've known for most of our lives. However, in certain parts of the world which have higher elevations, they have lower atmospheric pressure. For example, in Denver. Looking at the atmospheric pressure, it's significantly lower than that at sea level. And notice that water will boil at a lower temperature if you live in Denver. Let's say we go to one of the highest mountains in the world. We go on top of Mount Everest. Notice there, there's a significant decrease in atmospheric pressure when compared to sea level. And once again, water will boil at a lower temperature. So what's the take home message? The boiling point decreases as atmospheric pressure decreases. So no, water does not only boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If you go in areas of the world where there's less pressure, then water will boil at lower temperatures. That's a very important point to understand for today's demonstration. Here's a second clue, the rubber stopper. The rubber stopper's function is to seal the flask. It prevents air from entering or exiting the flask. In effect, we've created what's known in science as an isolated system. Here's the third clue, the ice. Ice has the effect of lowering the temperature of the air in the flask. This is very important. Not only may it be decreasing the temperature of the water, but it's also decreasing the temperature of the air. Lower temperature in turn decreases the air pressure inside the flask. So why does the water begin to boil with ice added? Returning to this graph, adding ice reduces the air pressure inside the flask. In turn, this reduces the temperature at which water will boil at. So how do we know we've lowered the air pressure? Let's watch this demonstration and see. We add the ice, water starts to boil, we've reduced the air pressure inside the flask. You can clearly see the water boiling. But now I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to remove the stopper. Let's see what happens when I remove the stopper. Notice the water has stopped boiling. So why is that? Well, by removing the stopper, the air pressure outside the flask equalizes 
with the air pressure inside the flask. Water stops boiling because the air pressure is back to normal and the water temperature is less than 100 degrees Celsius. So remember, when we're back at normal air pressure, you need the water to be at 100 degrees Celsius. But clearly it's not. So I hope you've enjoyed today's demonstration. Have a great day. Bye-bye.